Aloha, I'm Lisa Nakamura, and with me today is Chef Jonas Otsuji with SushiSurfer.com. Chef, tell us what you'll be doing today. We're going to be working with this Tasman salmon from Honolulu Fish Company. And let me just show you this because words do not do this thing justice. Um, there, there are a lot of imitators, but no duplicators of this. Let me, I mean, have you ever seen a salmon that, that sexy before? That is beautiful. Whew. Man, that's looking good. I mean, it's almost like a fluorescent orange. I, I have never, ever seen salmon that beautiful before. That is a thing of beauty. Um, I think I want to take a picture and just hang it on my wall. It has a that, very vibrant orange color to it. It's beautiful. That is amazing. Um, you can see all the fat marble in there. And that is, oh man, I can't wait. So what we're going to do to break down the salmon is we're just going to take off a little bit of this. Actually, you know, we can leave that right there. That's just pretty much fat. So we can leave that because I like fat. Um, do you have a problem with that? Absolutely not. Oh, good. <laughs> What we're going to do here, we're just going to straight take a little edge off of this here. And this, you know, if typically I would never cook a fish that's this fresh and this beautiful, but just this portion right here, since we can't get a nicely shaped piece, we're going to want to cook that up just a medium, I would say rare, okay? We're just going to cook that up just a rare piece right there. We'll take this here, go about a hand length. Um, if you're not sure, it's about a half a sheet of this seaweed, just about that much, okay? So we can go in there and actually, we can just kind of mark it like that. Go down like that, like that, and like that, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut through this beautiful buttery Tasman salmon. Oh my gosh. Look at that modeling. It's Ooh. amazing to see that. That is a thing of beauty. I mean, that is incredible. I've never seen anything quite like that. Um, like I said, uh, Honolulu Fish Company, if anybody says they have Tasman salmon, uh, if their name is not Honolulu Fish Company, don't believe them because I, I have seen uh, other companies that might call it that, but that, my friends, you cannot fool anybody with that. That, that is just pure butter right there. So we're going to um, cut all of these sections the same way. Cut it straight down all the way through, just like that. And towards the end here, you get a little less fat. Typically, on a normal salmon other than Honolulu Fish Company, when you get towards the end here, it gets really, really lean. Mm -hmm. This is the, actually the first time I've ever seen a salmon that has had this much fat towards the tail yeah, end this. of the fish, which is absolutely amazing. So, um, Lisa, I don't know about you, but I absolutely, I can't take it anymore. I've got to um, have some of this right now. So I'm just going to cut into this baby and we'll put that there. Oh my gosh. That is amazing. Um, okay, so, and uh, typically there would be like some pin bones running along here, but they're all taken out. So thank you to the uh, Honolulu Fish Company for that. So what we're gonna do here is uh, we're gonna cut some slices just for you and me. This is the best one because it's got that extra fat in there. So I'm gonna give that one to you. And let's just have a little sampling of this. Okay. Now, um, typically when you're dealing with wasabi, um, all, you've all seen that green Play-Doh-y looking substance at the sushi bars. Mm -hmm. um, I hate to break it to you, but that's actually not wasabi. That is a horseradish that's been dyed green. And they just call it wasabi. So this is real wasabi. This right here is a real wasabi root. And... Uh, it's it's nothing even close to the stuff that you get in that in the sushi bar that's that play-doh-y looking substance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grate this fresh wasabi root. Now, typically, um, when we're dealing with a stronger, uh, more a richer fish, 
you would put a little less wasabi on the sushi because uh, the stronger, uh, wasabi is kind of like salt. Yes. And it will accentuate the taste of the, the flavor of the fish. So for this, we're just gonna put a tad bit of, um, we're gonna put a tad bit of um, wasabi in there. So chef, on all your sushis, do you use the fresh wasabi? When I can, absolutely. Um, for a restaurant, it's simply just not as practical because uh, it's about $100 a pound for this stuff. So you can imagine that would get pretty darn pretty expensive if, if we tried to put it on every fish. Now I'm just gonna make a couple pieces here for you and me. Oh man, that is just that is beautiful. phenomenal. I'm telling you right now, I I haven't even tasted it yet, Lisa, and I know that this is going to be absolutely amazing. I don't think I've ever amazing. seen salmon marbled like that before. Okay, so let me teach you a little secret about um, eating nigiri sushi real quick. Okay. Um, a lot of times you'll go to the sushi bar and you'll see people grab this beautiful piece of sushi and they'll just dip their rice directly in that soy sauce, mm -hmm. and then the rice just falls all into that soy sauce and it kind of ruins it. So to prevent that from happening, what I like to do, when, you, when, when possible, you take this wonderful cooking paintbrush, and instead of flavoring the rice, we're gonna flavor oh, just fish. the meat of the fish, just a little tad, and this is low sodium soy sauce. But uh, that one's the one with the, all the fat on it, so you go ahead. Oh, just really quickly, I'm gonna put just a tad bit of green onion on both of these here, just so you can get a little flavor of that. Why don't you so go we ahead and- pick it up with our hands? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Like a <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm speechless. That's fabulous. It's really, really mm. good. Wow. Wow. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. That was so amazing. Um, whoa. Okay. So, I'm going to show you how to uh, break this down okay. into usable pieces for a nigiri sushi. And we're going to do the same thing for our rolls. So what I like to do is um, as the fish gets thicker and thicker, we're going to increase the angle. We're going we're gonna to straighten the angle of the knife as we get to the thicker portion. So as I start in the beginning, I'm going to be slanted like this. We're just going to cut down. As soon as you feel the skin, just give it a little push forward. Just like that. Cut down as soon as you feel the skin, just push it forward. And this is so buttery. It's literally, you can see the oil glistening off of the fish because it's so, so buttery and beautiful. So you notice as I get to this thicker portion, my knife is literally going straight up and down. Just like that. And oh my, 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 that is beautiful. Okay. Now this, uh, towards the middle, this, uh, this portion right here, it does change a little color, which is mm -hmm. fine. Um, some people like to take it off, but I, I just eat it. Are you trying to keep the size consistent when you cut it? Absolutely, yeah. You want to have everything... Because we're gonna serve these in pairs, mm -hmm. you wanna have everything to be uniform and symmetrical. And so much of sushi is presentation. So when you're cutting the pieces, just keep a mental log of how thick you're cutting it and try to cut each one the same thickness. And again, because this is such a soft and buttery fish, we're gonna cut these into really thick pieces. Because even that, did you see how thick that piece was that I put on there? But it just melts it almost was, like. Wish everybody out there could try because it it's oh. delicious. Just imagine a salmon cotton candy without the sugar, and that—that's basically what it's like. It just 
melts in your mouth like butter. Um, just beautiful. Should we have another piece? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So we cut all the way through these pieces and I'm just gonna spread all these down like that. And we will wrap this up and then we'll use that later on for our nigiri sushi. But wow, man, that's absolutely amazing. So after we cut the whole fish, after we're done cutting the whole fish right like this, come to this last piece and just cut that little section off. Now I, I typically like to leave just a tad bit of meat left on the skin because what we're going to do is we're going to broil this later and we're going to make some uh, Tasman salmon skin rolls and uh, we're going to crisp that up kind of like a salmon bacon and put that in a roll with a, maybe a little bit of chives and it's going to be out of this oh, world. Oh, that sounds phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you, Chef, for that delicious lesson. That salmon was absolutely wonderful. You're welcome.